Gareth, I've got the drawing. Architect Hugh Crawford and his wife Jude are renovating a run-down Welsh small holding. I'm stuck, actually. <laughs> and converting farm buildings into holiday cottages. Down, 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 down. But will their dream grind to a halt when they run into problems with the planners? The whole thing has been quite upsetting, really. And it's also cost us money. We sprung a leak. I'm fed up. Hugh and Jude Crawford have moved from Godalming near Guildford, Surrey, in the London commuter belt, to De Hewitt in Cardiganshire, or Ceredigion, to give it its Welsh name. After leaving his job as an architect, Hugh and wife Jude are about to embark on an enormous challenge and a complete change in their lifestyles by moving here, close to the beautiful Welsh coast. Their plans include sustainably renovating a farmhouse, transforming a small holding, and starting a new business. Hello, good morning, Tony. Good to meet Hello, you. Charlie. This is a beautiful part of the world, isn't it? Absolutely stunning, especially on a morning like this. A brilliant, frosty morning. It's lovely. So why, why this remote part of the country? Because um, it's over the hills and far away. You know, there's not a motorway here, there's not even a dual carriageway. And yet there's a fabulous community. And what about your adult lives? Have you lived in cities? Have you lived in the countryside since oh, you left home? Oh, Charlie, I don't know where to start. You know, <laughs> I'm an architect and uh, it's a licence to travel and to work in different places. I think in the time we've been married, I've probably set up home 17 times in different places. This is, I hope, where we stay. This is the penultimate move. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it better be the place we stay. It's taken a lot of hard work to get to this point now. Yeah. And so what will you need to achieve here if you are to fulfil the dream of moving to this rural part of the country? What we've got to do is um, have a, a livelihood here a certain amount of self-sufficiency, and um, then with a couple of holiday lets, and we'll derive um, an income from that. So you've got quite a lot to do, haven't you? I mean, there's no sort of retiring gracefully and no, joining don't. the country club, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't fancy that, the country club, really. No, we want to keep busy, we want to keep doing things. The Crawfords have bought 16 acres of land, three barns, some derelict outbuildings and a very squat, square farmhouse. It's about as ugly as it gets, quite honestly. <laughs> well, I'm kind of glad you said that because, uh, yeah, it's a very unusual looking piece of architecture. I mean, the very strange proportions, really. What are you actually going to do to the outside of the building? We're going to replace the windows, lower the sills, uh, put back the front door, and um, a two-storey extension out here. To balance the strange shape of the old farmhouse, Hugh has designed a timber frame extension and plans to use sustainable materials wherever he can. The ground floor of the new section will house the kitchen diner. In the existing house, the ground floor will become the living room. Upstairs, there will be two bedrooms, one with an ensuite, as well as a family bathroom. The first floor of the extension will become a huge studio space for Jude, who is a keen artist. This room will double as a spare bedroom. They hope to make the roof of the new extension from shiny corrugated tin, echoing the style of agricultural buildings that are all over this part of Wales. Hugh and Jude have their youngest daughter, Izzy, staying for a few months to help them get started on the renovations. So you're involved in this project. What are you going to be doing? Um, helping out, doing anything I can, really. Helping out with physical stuff outside, moving, digging, knocking down. Um, helping, you know, sort the house out and things. Anything. There's some pretty groovy colours going on in here, isn't there? Got every colour you can think of, I think, in um, this house. The, the previous occupants were Hindu-based, and they used us as an ashram, and they came here for weekends. 
All three of them are currently living in the house, but as soon as work starts, they'll move into a static caravan on site. As well as gutting and extending the house, Hugh and Jude plan to convert the outbuildings into holiday lets. Here, This uh, old cart house and the stable block becomes one of the cottages, and the workshop a second cottage. Adjoining the holiday cottages is a barn that will be a recreation area for guests. The cottages themselves will be simple in design and traditional materials will be used throughout. The larger one will sleep four and the smaller one three. The old cow barn next door is currently open to the elements, but the Crawfords have big plans for it. We'll keep the space and we use it for recreation. When it's foul weather outside, people can come in here, there'll be a fire, they can barbecue in here, they have parties in here. We've also got a very important use for this building. Next June, our eldest daughter, Jessie, is getting married to Duncan, and we're going to use it for their wedding. That's six months' time. It's got to be finished. And I know it takes a lot of imagination when you see it like this, open to the sky, but it's going to be part of the wedding plans. And Jess has seen this space as it stands. <laughs> she has. Yes. It'll all come together. It's a deadline to have, so it'll get done. Hugh and Jude have set a deadline of a year to finish everything. The house, land and buildings cost £297,000. And they want to stay mortgage-free, so hope to spend no more than £120,000 to complete the works. This total of £417,000 will come from savings and the proceeds from the sale of their old house. You're about to go into what is undoubtedly going to be a wet, dark Welsh winter. Which part of this dream is <laughs> going to help you get through the, the tough times? It's the end product. <laughs> and the other thing is being together and having been together all the time and having this... Um, the companionship. You realise all our married life, we've been going out to work and we see each other in the evening at weekends. This is the first time we have lived mm. together day after day. It's a great opportunity and if this is our only chance we're going to get. And do it now. Not only have Hugh and Jude taken on a massive project, they've also given themselves an immovable deadline. Because daughter Jessica is hoping to get married in that building in six months' time. Architect Hugh and his wife Jude have given up everything to start a new life in Wales. They've bought a farmhouse and a 16-acre small holding. Here we go. They're mortgage-free and living in a caravan on site with their belongings in storage. This is our world here, with all our furniture and possessions. <laughs> you look like a maniac. <laughs> with help from the family, they're renovating the house. Operation Dismantled Bathroom, I think. Oh, my God! Uh. For the first week of work, 29-year-old son Will and his girlfriend Lucy and eldest daughter Jess are all on hand to help. The first job is to start turning the barns into holiday cottages. On the trailer. On the trailer. It's incredible how much you can do if you double the number of people. Hugh will be managing the build from this shed and Jude will also be helping plan Jess's wedding from here. The shed that's within the shed that we're building at the moment it's going to be what's been nicknamed the home office and it's going to be where we'll have the computer and the, the uh, phone lines and things because we need a place of work. They're hoping to hold the wedding in this barn in six months' time. Look at this place. <laughs> it looks worse now. When I came before, there was, you know, there was grass and, um, and now just coming here and it's just a complete muddy... Mud site. Excavating a large pond and doing landscaping has left the whole site covered in sludge. What we're doing here is the land drain. Let's just take the surface water, the runoff, to take it into a land drain down there. June, if you 
step over this. It's probably best to put it between your legs, isn't it? Yeah. I'm stuck, actually. <laughs> there we go. Now the water has started to drain away, they can begin erecting the frame for the polytunnel under which they'll grow their own veg. It said, choose a warm, dry, sunny day to set out your polytunnel. Amen. With the wedding venue a priority, Hugh has contracted two skilled local tradesmen, John and Danny, to start work on the long barn. I'm trying to be really rather systematic and um, efficient. I like to draw everything. I always like to design things before we build. Apex down. The first job is to erect the timber trusses that the new roof will sit on. Down, 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 down. Throughout the whole project, traditional methods that are kinder to the environment will be used. Fantastic. Only another four to go, Hugh. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's the first thing out of the ground, really. Very satisfying. Hugh and Jude plan to rent out the holiday cottages in a year's time to provide an income to supplement their pension. It's... Um, a great relief not to have to go into an office to get off that treadmill. We're creating our own business here. After a couple of weeks, the underlay and battens for the new roof are on. Gareth, I've got the drawing and work on the extension that Hugh has designed for the main house starts. Water, Mum. But the Welsh winter is making caravan life almost unbearable. It's um, minus eight outside, and some one morning it was minus two inside, and the poor dog looked a bit frozen. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> off with all this. I'm just fed up. Last night we heard a gushing noise and Dad came out and the pipe had burst. We'd been without water last night and this morning. Horrid. Utterly foul. <sighs> Dead birds down here, you know that. Time like this, it really makes me want to go back to work and getting away from all of this. I would just love an assignment in Bangkok right now. Get away from the cold. Thank you. Life in the static van is um, testing, I would say. The great motivation now is not to spend a second winter in the van. We've got to be in the house before November. Although Hugh has officially retired, he gets his wish and is offered a 10-day job in China. With daughter Izzy away pursuing a teaching career, Jude's left holding the fort. Two to one, yeah. While he's been away, everything has gone on quite well. There are occasional decisions, chasing up deliveries, making some phone calls. To keep the wedding venue progressing in Hugh's absence, Jude works away on her own. The finish we're going for is um, rustic. Um, just make it so it's not got flaky plaster on it. Tommy, so when you do this, you don't, it's difficult to know when to stop. Because you end up taking a whole lot off. Jessie, the bride to be, and her fiance Duncan are coming for a long weekend to help on site. It's the first time Duncan will have seen the venue since work began. Doesn't look big enough, Joe. You can't do much in here. You can have you can have your dancing in here. You can't. You, you can. can't do strip the willow in here. 
But suddenly it does all seem quite kind of overwhelming now. It does still look like a bomb site. This has to be where they're going to have their wedding because there isn't an alternative um, and everything is in place now. So they will have to accept what we've done and I'm sure it will be fine. To cheer Duncan up, Jude takes him and Jesse to a local Welsh microbrewery to sample beer for the wedding. We brew it just a bit sweeter than normal bitter, just so it goes well with food. Really good. <laughs> Got through quite a lot of that, I think. How many barrels do you think you need then, Dad? Oh, open the car up. <laughs> Impressed with the local brew, Duncan takes a few samples back home. Hugh has returned, jet lagged from his flight back from China. Jesse, don't take all the bloody mortar out. Please, look. And he's not too happy with some of the work There's done in his mind. absence. Don't take all, throw it all off. I Please. haven't touched this. No. You've been very, you know. Look, can you take that off? You're working your way around this yeah, way. Yeah, I've done that wall, that wall. <laughs> but I haven't done where you're working down there. So, are we working around like this, then? We haven't been working around it anyway, Dad, and you know that's why you're asking um, like that. He's come back from China, and this barn's not made as much progress as it's meant to have. So it's a good time today to have a I pint. I think Dad might um, need a beer, actually. I think we might give him some of the beer. The plot outside the barn, which they've started to landscape, is going to be the site for Jesse's wedding marquee. Wynn from the hire company arrives to check the space that Hugh's prepared is big enough. Can you go to that corner, please? So 40 by 30, that's what we first discussed. Yes, yes. This is 24 feet. Is it? We've got to make the, make the flat bit bigger and make sure that it's compact and firm. Otherwise, it could fall on their heads. Yeah, I have to say that things are, on the ground have taken far longer than I ever thought. What we have to do, put posts in here. So they have to extend and strengthen the plot for the marquee, an extra job they could well do without. In the farmhouse, progress has been slow. But today, the floor is being lowered, ready for a new plumbing and heating system. At the moment, we are uh, digging out to lay the uh, drains for the whole house. Hopefully, get them in by the end of the day. What comes after S in the alphabet? Oh, come on. Uh, half past 11. Two, two, two. <laughs> Tea. Good boy. Milk, no sugar. While the drains are going down in the house and new extension, Jude is making wedding decorations. Well, I thought it'd be nice to have bunting at this wedding, because it's... It's not like an ordinary wedding in any way. I thread all the different colours onto the string and hopefully they'll all stay together. <laughs> the first delivery of corrugated metal sheeting that will be used to roof the long barn, holiday lets and the extension arrives on site. It's come from Scotland. They're the only people who will bend the metal for me. So unfortunately it's not made in Wales. It's very practical. It's lightweight. It's got a life expectancy of 20 or 30 years here. Thereafter, you can overcoat it or replace it. The last time I was here in Wales, the wedding venue was an outbuilding that was derelict with no roof, and the farmhouse was a, a psychedelic bomb site. That was six months ago. So I'm hoping to see some improvement. I see you've, you've dug out the floor, haven't yes. you? 
Yes, we've gone down about 200 millimetres below uh, finished floor level. And then what, what's going back in? Putting down a membrane insulation slab. And that's a concrete slab? It is, yes. Upstairs? Yeah, come on up. So, still the great colours. So what's through here? Well, we've got one big room. We've got three rooms into one here, so this is uh, our bedroom. Can you raise these windows up at all? Oh, we could do, but I, it's, um, I quite like the idea of the cottagey feel. So you can see when you're out. in bed, yeah. that is such a good view. It is, yeah. What's the layout in the extension going to be, then? Well, you come through this door here. This is, a, this is the entrance hall. Yeah. And through into this big kitchen. It's the kitchen that goes all the way out to the edge over there. Looking down on the water, you've got reflected sky and looking in a subtly direction. I can hear there's a lot of work going on with the barn. Yes. It's what you might call a, a milestone in the programme. It's nice. And I like the fact you're, you're working with corrugated iron. It feels so right on these kind of agricultural buildings. And it's quite cheap, isn't it? It's cheap as chips, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the wedding venue taking shape and the food being grown on site coming along nicely, I'm concerned the farmhouse may be playing second fiddle. I was wondering whether, in fact, all the effort that's being focused on the barn to get it ready for the wedding is slightly slowing up progress on the house. I think it did initially, but now the... Uh, and that was like, sort of a bit of an issue. I, we had a bit of a kind of, you know, why can't we get on with the house? The cottages haven't got too far. How important for you guys financially is it that you get the holiday cottages up and running? That's pretty important. And we've put a lot of money into it and um, the income is part of our retirement plan. Um, and we, don't, we want to um, work hard at it and um, ex you know, make it grow and be successful. So it is important. Well, the barn and preparations are certainly coming along, but with just six weeks left of the wedding, there's still so much to do. And this is really my big concern, because while Hugh and Jude are focusing all their energy on the big day, nothing is happening on the farmhouse. And if they don't sort this out soon, I've got a horrible feeling they could be spending another Welsh winter in a caravan. For five months, Hugh and Jude Crawford have been renovating the buildings on their Welsh small holding. They're rushing to get one of the barns ready for their daughter's wedding in just five weeks. Today, the roof lights in the long barn are being uncovered. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, that's lovely. Come and have a look at this. Oh, that's very bright. And the insulation's going in. As a keen environmentalist, Hugh's having recycled newspaper pumped into the roof cavity. What I'm, I'm concerned about is the, the fire resistance of this material. Put this layer on your hand. I'll be all right, will I? Yeah, I'll show you the fire retardants and how they work. Penny. That's incredible. While the barn is insulated, Hugh takes delivery of his new window frames. Wherever possible, he's using traditional lime mortar, as it's more environmentally friendly. But while work on the long barn is steaming ahead, progress on the farmhouse has come to a halt. The house has taken um, second place recently because the barn, that's been our priority. I shouldn't say that I'm looking forward to the wedding being over. Um, I am a bit. The once it's over, we'll feel more relaxed and get on with the house. So it is a bit of a landmark we have to get through. Jessie, the blushing bride-to-be, arrives on site a week before the big day. Here. So there's all the normal wedding stuff that I've got had to do, you know, like the table plan and the names and the, the order of service. And then there's the other stuff that maybe people don't normally have to do, like painting the window frames and cleaning the barn. No manicure for me. Izzy, her younger sister, has come back to help too. It's going to be very manic over the next few days. 
What's the important thing for me to do? Well, we've got to get that kitchen area. Oh, I've got to do the waste. Up. I've got to get the and waste. And the to kite. All right, OK. We just asked. <laughs> you got the answer. One, two, three. <laughs> the marquee arrives and just fits on the newly extended terrace. Ready? Go. Go. With just one day to go, it's all hands on deck. We've got lots of help. We've got to build the bar, we've got to get the lights up. Um, oh, fridge! It's, it looks bigger, doesn't it? Mm, a lot bigger, it's really nice. It's, and I love that out the window there. I can't believe we've got to this stage. You think back three months ago, um, it didn't seem possible we would have got to today. Um, there was a heap of mud, the barn had no roof on it, it was ruined. All the little bits are now coming together and it's um, beginning to look like a, a proper, you know, venue. That looks great. Wow! Brilliant! It's going to be a great day. It's a, a, a good milestone, but quite honestly, I'm looking forward to progressing other parts of the project. Finally, the newly renovated Long Barn hosts its first social engagement. I can't believe it's happening. I know. It's a great occasion today and really has sort of um, christened the place. There were points when I thought this day would never happen. Mum and Dad have done amazing work. It's been absolutely brilliant. With the big day over, work recommences in the house. First, Hugh lays a plastic sheet to stop damp, and then the concrete floor slab is poured. Nine months into the renovation, the old farmhouse takes a small step closer to becoming a home. And the wood arrives for the timber frame extension that Hugh has lovingly designed. There's a bit of tension because you don't know whether it's going to work or not, you know. They say, oh, I'm so sorry, you. we have to go away. You, you've got this dimension wrong by half a metre, sort of thing. His sustainable structure will take a week to piece together and slot into place. Oh, it's a transformation of all these bits of tree into a, a space. As a leaving gift from his job as an architect, Hugh was given a chicken coop. To put it to use, Jude has found a local breeder to supply her with four chicks. Now, these are actually nine weeks now. Number one. Hugh was insistent we had a cockerel to have the cockerel doodle do, and, and anyway, apparently, it keeps the girls happy. But whether that's so, I don't know. <laughs> it's approaching the end of summer, so I'm paying a visit to see how much progress there is on site. Hello, Hugh. Hello, Charlie. How are you? I'm very well indeed. What a, what a very nice timber frame you've got. Thank you very much. Beautiful. You like it? Yeah. It's one thing to draw it all, isn't it? And quite another to actually sort of have it appear. It is, because you draw it in 2D and you visualise it, but there's nothing quite like seeing it in, in 3D. Now, you had hoped to be sort of in here relatively soon, hadn't you? Living in the house. 
Yeah, there's been a setback, there's, um, but we're going to be in the house before winter. You are? We are going to be in the house, but the, the, uh, the kitchen won't, won't be done. It won't be finished by then. We're actually hanging on planning consent for this. But I thought you had planning permission for this. I mean, I've never been aware that there wasn't planning permission in place. The only objections on, are on appearance. The planning officer's opinion that the roofs should be slate, and it's a matter of his opinion against my opinion. Um, but his opinion's winning out. Of course, of course. So your tin roofs are just wrong. They are in someone's eyes, yes. One of the things I really remember about your design and your passion was, was this corrugated iron, this crinkly tin. You were really excited about it and the way that it tied in with the kind of vernacular local architecture here. That's right. I will go to appeal. So and you're going to fight? Yes. There's no question at all about it. The zinc roof is more sustainable than a slate roof, particularly an artificial slate roof or an imported slate roof. It's far more sustainable. I would go to appeal and they can see what the zinc roof looks like. The planners believe the metal sheeting would not respect the character and appearance of these traditional rural buildings. The Crawfords do have permission to extend the house and convert the barns into holiday cottages. But Hugh and Jude may have to remove the metal roof on the long barn and replace it with slate. But how do you feel about it? Because this is your, you know, your dream project. You've sort of been planning this for years and years and years. You've put everything you've got into it. You're working very hard and then sort of people miles away are telling mm. you how to do it. I think it's ridiculous. It makes me very cross because it's not, it's a design um, issue. It's nothing to do with what I think planners should be involved in. And their arguments don't make sense to me. Are you up for fighting this? Yeah, definitely. I think one should if you have not, you know, take a stand about it. There's a good argument why we should have it. And there's also the fact we have a good team of people working on site and we've had to lay them off for a while. Well, I came up here today expecting to see stacks of progress and I seem to have walked into something of a battleground and it looks like it's going to be something of a fight. Hugh seems absolutely determined to get his tin roof. The planners seem absolutely determined that he doesn't. Hugh has resubmitted his application. While they wait to hear back from the planners, he and Jude decide to investigate one of the region's most famous tourist attractions. They head 20 minutes down the road to the seaside town of Newquay, in the middle of Cardigan Bay. Today is our day off. We're going to have a good day out. This is one of only two places in the British Isles where you can regularly see wild dolphins. What were the dolphins up ahead on the left here? Wow. Oh, there they go, yeah. They've been right out the water. They came right out. Look at that. Today is a bit of research. We're researching the area, looking to see the attractions. And unless we do these things, it's, we can't tell our visitors. It's too here now. It's de-stressed me quite a lot, actually. It's taken my mind off the, the project and the, uh, uh, the various stresses we've had, but it's been really good. The Crawfords originally went ahead with building works without full planning consent, which is a risky strategy. They've now heard back from the planners, and although they can proceed with building the extension and converting the holiday cottages, the permission states the roofs must be slate. It says the roof shall be covered with the approved slate, and the slate will be natural or artificial slate. The risk Hugh took by fitting the metal roof on the barn has not paid off. The planning application does mention the barn that we did for the wedding. They expect us to remove the metal roof that we've already put on the barn. The whole thing has been quite upsetting really. I mean I would think that it has at least set us back two months or more and it's also cost us money. But the tradesmen are back, and work recommences on everything, apart from the roofs. The first 
desperate a painting. I can't believe that we're actually got to this stage. Um, I'm a bit kind of <laughs> thinking, am I really going to do this? Hughes decided to challenge the planning decision on his ruse at the highest level possible, the Welsh Assembly. We've put an appeal to the planning inspectorate in Cardiff, and it's no easy task. It's a great tome. This is, this is a copy of the planning appeal. We should hear in the middle of January, so we haven't got too long to wait. A second winter in the caravan wasn't part of their plan, but with the house unfinished, and Hugh's determination to get the home he wants, they're left with no other option. Jude, what are we going to do about Christmas? You promised. I know, I know, I know. I failed, I failed. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jude. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Too late now. The Crawfords have spent just over a year renovating this Welsh small holding. But a disagreement with the planners about the roofing material has delayed the build. The last time I saw Hugh, he was very confident that he and Jude would be in the house by winter. Well, winter has most definitely arrived, and I'm here to see how the Crawfords are getting on and to see if they finally managed to resolve their planning issues. Hello, Jude. Hi. Hello, Hi, Hugh. Hi, welcome. It's stunning weather. Isn't it great? Lovely to see you. Mm. Yes, it's alpine, isn't it? <laughs> now tell me, have you heard about your planner? Oh, I'm afraid not. We haven't heard. And uh, all I can think is that the planning inspector hasn't been able to come out to see the place because of the weather. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it's, it's very difficult getting here. <laughs> very difficult getting yeah. here. But on the other hand, we are progressing the inside of the house. So have you actually moved in yet? We partly moved in. We're living between the caravan and here. Because of the hold-ups, the extension is no more than a watertight shell. But seeing it, you get an idea of just how big the kitchen and spare bedroom come studio will be. And the magnificent views the Crawfords will get from the floor to ceiling windows. It's upstairs in the existing house where Hugh and Jude have been concentrating all their efforts. So this is our bedroom. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? What do you think? It's lots of sunshine, lots of light. Yeah. It does, because it faces south and you get reflected light from the water. Wonderful, lovely room to wake up in and to see the sunrise. A bit cold sometimes on these winter mornings, but it still uh, was a great decision to move in here because it's so nice. And these are like window seats, so you can sit down here. Take in that view. I mm. think it's a very nice room. But what I really like about it is that it it's, you know, it's a good-sized bedroom, but it still feels cottagey. It was important to us to keep the cottage feel. It is a farmhouse, it's not a grand house, and it would have been wrong to overdo it. And these beams here, mm. the roof timbers. Just lovely wow. rough sawn as they would have been when they went in. Mm. Yes, and we pick, uh, picked them out in this um, uh, oxblood red. And I like all these pictures, they really fit in well. Well, they're Judas. Are they? <laughs> no, I knew you did art, but I haven't actually seen any. Well, I uh, haven't done anything. Since we moved here, I've packed everything away and I've just been busy doing the renovation and um, growing vegetables. <laughs> but at last, we got into the container and got out some of my work and I'm very happy. It looks nice in here. The ensuite shower room has been designed and installed by Hugh. Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? I love the, the roof lights in here and the whole shape of the room is fantastic. It's so nice having top light. It's brilliant. And for once we've got a big shower and uh, it's lovely. It's a great luxury. And this is slate, is it? This is slate. This is um, Penant slate. It's local slate. Really good. And again, the boarding, just this simple rough-cut timber really fits in with 
the rest of the house. The biggest triumph so far is the long barn, the multi-purpose recreational space attached to the holiday lets that started out as a total ruin. What a transformation. This is where the, the wedding was, wasn't That's it? That's right, yeah. What are you using it for now? Well, we got so tired of the caravan, we decided to move some of our things in here and have an escape. So it's just a nice place to relax in at the moment. I love the lime on the walls, very simple, untreated walls, the boarding on the roof and the, and the, the rawness of the, the frame. I think it's a very nice piece of architecture, especially those slot roof lights. I'm really, really happy with it. At the start of the project, Hugh estimated the total cost of the work would be £120,000. I'm interested to find out how much you've spent so far and how much you think it's all going to cost to finish. We've spent 100000 up to now, and um, it would cost us about another £70,000 to finish this. So in total about 170000 Yes, yes. I think the extra £50,000 they'll end up spending is well worth it for the quality of design and workmanship that's being achieved. The holiday cottages will be let at between £80 and £90 a night. And even though they're a long way from being finished, Jude's already planning how to maximise the profits. There's the option to eat here as well, so there will be homegrown produce. So your hens as well, are they laying eggs yet? Not yet. I'm, they're fairly imminent, I hope. I think as spring, as the days, we get longer days, we should have eggs very soon. You've been here just over a year now. How are you feeling about the big move and, and coming to follow this dream? It's been really hard work and pretty rough, but it's been very rewarding what we've got, actually got out of it. I never thought I'd be, you know, be doing this kind of thing, but I've always been up for a you know, challenge, and <laughs> this project has been quite a challenge, yes. When I first met you, you mentioned about the fact that this was going to be the first time in your lives that you've really had a chance to spend a lot of time together. Yes. How's that worked out? It's worked out all right, you know, we're still friends. And uh, <laughs> I realise that the, Jude has some strengths that I don't have. She's, uh, she's the dynamo, really. I might have a wheel or two, but she's the dynamo behind this, uh, this project. She pushes it on, does she? Yes, yes. Oh, you could say it's pushing or nagging, I don't know. I do quite a lot of nagging. Why haven't we done this? But <laughs> it has brought us together and we'll be finished by summer. Well, and you can come and have tea on the lawn. Well, I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to. And, and best of luck. Once the planning dispute is resolved, Hugh and Jude will be able to complete the extension and holiday lets. For the Crawfords, this project has never been about sticking to budgets or, or rushing to meet deadlines, but about fulfilling an ambition. They saw the potential in a quite ugly, unloved set of buildings, and they are now well on their way to creating something rather wonderful and sustainable. They've also managed to create themselves a whole new way of life in this very special place that both their family and guests will now be able to enjoy for years to come.